Okay, so now that we've learned about this non-steady state diffusion, let's actually try out a problem. So what we have here is a face center cubic iron carbon alloy, which initially contains 0.2 weight percent carbon. And so we carburize at an elevated temperature in an atmosphere in which the surface carbon concentration is maintained at one weight percent. If you're looking like at old like knights and round table kind of black movies, where they got the carbon was they were just burning. They were burning coal and the carbon would be in the air. So that's how they would increase the carbon content. Now, if after 49 and a half hours, the concentration of carbon is 0.35 weight percent at a position four millimeters below the surface, determine the temperature at which the treatment was carried out. Okay, temperature. So I've tried to underline most of the things that are important though, and this FCC is not actually important. So we're gonna to need to know the initial weight percent the surface weight percent, our final weight percent, the time, the position, and we want to figure out the temperature. Now we're going to have to use those error function tables to solve this. It is, it is not fun, but you need to do that. Now we know what the time is. We know what the position x is. Okay, check, check. Do we know our diffusion coefficient though? Oh. We don't know that diffusion coefficient. And where in the world is temperature going to come from? Well, you know, you know that the diffusion coefficient is temperature dependent, so we'll get it from that. Okay, we know what our concentration of that position is, initial and surface. So we can calculate this side. And so what we'll get is that this right here is equal to 1 minus erp of z, okay? Just forget that this is in there right now and just say that it's z for the moment. And you're gonna look at your tables. So we get that earth z is equal to 0.8125. That's just coming from plugging everything in there. And if I look at my table, well, I'll find that, okay, z, earth z 0.8125 is gonna be equal to this value. Oh, but wait a minute. Ah, that's just a z there. Hmm. So you can see that I have values of z at 0.9 and 0.95, and I've got earth z values at 0.797 and 0.8209. But I don't want to have one for 0.8125. This is going to happen almost every single time you do a problem with the error function. You're going to have to in learn to interpolate. It's kind of like um, the slope. Well, you say there is a linear slope between this point and this point. And by understanding that, you can figure out what the value of z would be for this particular point. So if you're not sure how to write this out, it's what you want right here minus this bottom over the top minus the bottom. And that's equal to what you got minus the bottom over the top minus the bottom. Be very careful when you're plugging this in your calculator that you put parentheses around these before you divide. Otherwise, you're gonna have a bad time. And if you do that correctly, you'll get that z is equal to 0.93. Okay, now we know that z is equal to all of this, and so we need to plug it in and solve. So we put everything in there, and we will get that my diffusion coefficient is 2.6 times 10 to negative 11 meters square per second. Things to be careful about, one, the time has to be in seconds. Two, my distance has to be in meters. All that has to be there because we need meters squared per second at the end. That's the units we always use. So do not forget to convert. There are one hour, or there's 3,600 seconds in one hour, and that's gonna be used to convert here. Now, we know how to calculate um, a diffusion coefficient based on a particular temperature. But we need some information from that. For example, we would need the activation energy and my pre-exponential constant, which the problem doesn't give us. You actually have to go and find that from a table. So that information isn't gonna necessarily be given to you like we don't have two temperatures or two points to figure it out from. So you would have to use the table to figure out what those are so you can plug it in here. And if we do that, we plug it all in, well, what do we get? 
we'll get that our temperature is going to come out to be 1300 Kelvin or 1027 degrees Celsius. This temperature you're going to calculate will come out in Kelvin because the temperature you have to use has to be in Kelvin. Be very careful typing these natural logs. Be very careful with your brackets and your parentheses. All that's going to be important when you're typing up these problems. Also, the activation energy often comes in kilojoules per mole. You'll need to switch it to regular old joules per mole. And there are 1,000 joules in one kilojoule. So thank you for listening. I hope this helps you. And the biggest, biggest, biggest thing to remember from this example is right here. Right there. Do not forget that. That is incredibly important. And it's how you're going to be able to solve these problems. So I'll see you all next time. Okay? Bye-bye.